when you think of borders, do you think of them as things that separate or things that connect? Consider the borders of California. What comes to mind to you more immediately? Do the borders separate us from Oregon, Arizona, Nevada, and Mexico? Or do the borders connect us to Oregon, Nevada, Arizona, and Mexico? When you think of borders, what does it mean to feel separate? When you think of borders, what does it feel like to have connection there, interaction and livelihood there? There are other borders. Consider the border that is made manifest by wearing a mask. Does wearing a mask mean that I am separate from you? Or does wearing a mask mean I am connected to you? Philosopher Todd McGowan says that the reason some people hate masks is because masks are a very visible sign that we are connected. And yes, though it shields us or separates us from the germs, what this sign of the mask means that we can share things and we are connected and that we are dependent on each other. So in a subconscious way, the rejection of wearing a mask is a rejection of the reality that we are mutually dependent on one another, that we are connected. And this sense of connection and dependency can make us feel very vulnerable. And, and those who hate masks, uh, Todd McGowan goes to say, are people who want to see themselves as the architects of their own destiny. It is individualism on steroids. So, the borders can repel and the borders can attract. And it has to do with whether otherness and difference is a means for connecting and therefore a means to be transformed, or if the borders is an otherness is a challenge to one's identity, especially if that identity feels fragile. If we want to gain another perspective, then we go to the borders. Today, Jesus gains a wider perspective by crossing borders. He's been preaching and healing in Galilee. Galilee was a Jewish region on the west side of the Sea of Galilee. He's been calming the storms on the Sea of Galilee. He's been rejected in Nazareth of Galilee. He's been arguing in a synagogue in Capernaum of Galilee. He's been doing healing at Genezaret of Galilee. So much of this work has been in Jewish territory. Last week, we heard Jesus argue with the religious leaders about boundaries, about the boundaries of purification. The question was, do purification rites really separate us from what is unclean and what is clean? When uncleanness is, according to Jesus, those things are inside the heart, fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, and folly. Can a purification rite create a boundary there? And Jesus wants to show that the boundaries of holiness are sketched between our intentions and God's love. 
mindful of these boundaries, these borders of holiness today, we witness Jesus crossing from Galilee to Phoenicia, from a Jewish region to a Gentile region. And in this boundary crossing, something unexpected happens. Something of the kingdom will open, will be released. That was before a tight knot in the mind. Two events happen today that untie the knot. Jesus has a conversation with the Syrophoenician woman. And Jesus will open the ear, the ears and release the tongue of a deaf mute man in Decapolis. So first, Tyre. He goes to Tyre. Tyre was a wealthy city of Phoenicia. Economically superior to Galilee in every way, Galilee served Tyre's appetites and pleasures while its own citizens eked out a li livelihood. Class resentment piled high as the Galileans watched their harvest carted away to the tables of those rich Gentile dogs in that big city. There was a border between Phoenicia and Galilee. There, was, there were other borders, the border between Gentile and Jew, and also the border between the haves and the have-nots. But there was one more border that was going to be crossed here. And this was crossed by the Syrophoenician woman who comes to Jesus and speaks to him, trespassing cultural borders of not engaging in conversation with a man, and certainly not as an equal, and certainly not to teach him something, which she does today. She has a daughter who has a demon, and she asks Jesus to expel the demon. But Jesus' mind was surrounded by borders, borders of his own identity as a Jew, borders of his maleness, and borders of his sense of mission, of being first sent to the Jews. So he says to her, you know, it's not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. Dogs, puppies, whatever Jesus' feelings about dogs, in his eyes, this woman was a Gentile and therefore was outside, was an other. And the fullness of the kingdom would have to wait for those who are outside. But the woman insisted, nevertheless, she persisted. Using her wit, she turns the repost into a revelation. She retorted, sir, even the dogs under the table eat the master's crumbs. She was saying, oh, come on, there's more than enough. She was saying, oh, come on, Ephatha, be opened. And his mind opened at the boundary crossing. God's grace is not regulated by his timing and by who comes first. There was more than enough. This boundary crossing opened for him his eyes, his ears, his mouth, and he said to her, for saying that, literally saying, for speaking these words to me, you opened me, you released the tight knot in my mind, and now your daughter has also been released. The liberation of the kingdom 
overflows into more liberation. Liberation is contagious. Liberation connects us. So it was water down the hill to follow the liberation, more opening, more release, more and more boundary crossings from Tyre up north to Sidon, back down to the Decapolis, boundary after boundary, moving further and further out into Gentile territory. So when Jesus arrived at the Decapolis and they brought before him a deaf mute man, it was natural. He who was gifted with Ephatha being opened would say to the man, Ephatha, be opened. And liberation was given to this man as it was given to Jesus. And the kingdom was revealed at the border crossing. Borders are everywhere. And in this case, then, connections are everywhere. They are inside the human heart. They are between people and places and strangers. Each border signifies a connection. Each boundary encounter can be a revelation. Jesus crossed boundaries and was taught a good lesson. The Syrophoenician woman crossed a boundary and propelled the kingdom forward to more borders of the holy. At each crossing then that we all may come to, let us be attuned to what good news of liberation, release and connection might be spoken to us. Amen.